Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm your car buying resource. This question comes up a lot with my customers. Should I finance or should I lease my next vehicle? I'm gonna give you some pluses and minuses on both sides so that you can make the best choice when you buy your next vehicle. Let's find out who wins. First, let's talk about reasons why people might wanna finance. I wanna keep it forever. I'm gonna drive it till the wheels fall off. That's the way it's always been. I've always financed. I don't want to lease. I don't like leasing. I like to own my cars. I don't want to rent them. I don't want to lease them. And then I drive way too many miles. I could never lease because I drive too much. Now let's talk about some reasons why people might choose to lease. You get a lower monthly payment than if you're financing. And that's true in just about all situations. There are some exceptions. You're going to be getting a brand new vehicle every three years with new technology and safety features. I had a 15 Camry, I leased an 18 Camry because number one, I could get blind spot monitor standard on my car. That wasn't a possibility back in 15, so I took advantage of a safety feature that existed three years later, but just wasn't there before. Generally, you could get more features when you lease for the same payment as if you were to finance. In other words, maybe you could get a car that has a moonroof, push button start, or maybe leather seats with heated seats and that might be the same price or just a little more or a little less than if you were to finance. Flexibility at the end of the term. That's a big one because then you might choose after three years to buy the car, to keep it. You could trade it in for something else or you could just give it back to your manufacturer. Uh, you get to drive it under the warranty. That's a big one with a lot of brands. So it's covered against defects and recalls and things like that for the main part of when you're going to be driving it. Gap insurance, that's included with Toyota vehicles, that's a big one. So if your car is totaled or anything like that, it will fill in the gap between what you still owe the manufacturer or the bank and what the car is now worth. It fills in that gap. And then you get to drive it for the best part. There's nothing like buying a brand new vehicle and then you get to drive it when you know it's going to be driving perfectly without clicks and rattles and things like that. Those are some reasons why you might want to lease. Now let's talk about some of the objections against leasing. Reasons you might not want to go ahead with it. Number one, I drive too many miles. I like to own my cars, I don't want to rent them. Someone told me not to. I've never leased before, I'm a little nervous about it. I don't want to be charged excess wear and tear. Or I had a bad experience in the past leasing before. And now my answers to some of these. I drive too many miles. The standard lease is 12,000 miles per year. That gives you 36,000 miles over the whole lease term. You're allowed to buy extra miles for $15, $20 a month for extra. So you can buy 15,000 miles, that gives you 45,000. Or maybe 18,000 miles a year, that'll give you 54,000 miles. So it gives you a little bit of padding, a little peace of mind that you're gonna be just fine. I like to own my cars, not rent. Well, the bank looks at it as the same thing. Whether you're leasing or financing, you're making January payment, February payment, March payment, you're owing the bank. You still owe the bank, so try not making three payments or so to the rightful owner and the bank will come get it. You don't owe it until it's 100% paid off and you have that title in your hands, guys. So, someone told me not to. I would wanna ask them, did you have a bad experience? Maybe leasing wasn't for you, or maybe you just didn't know enough about it so that you could do it so it was in your favor. I've never leased before. I had to look at that one. I've never leased before. Well, maybe it's time to start. You'll have to look at this video and see if it makes a little bit more sense than it did before. I don't want to be charged excess wear and tear. Well, most manufacturers are pretty conservative about what you bring back to them. For example, Toyota will allow some scratches and dings on the door panel, several actually. You're allowed to bring back relatively low tire tread. Um, so you can look at that. You can also get excess wear and tear insurance or warranty coverage so that when you bring it back, you're allowed lots of damage on the car. You can bring it back with bald tires, for example, and you've already had that built into your price, so you're covered no matter what. You can do that. I had a bad experience leasing in the past. Well, talk to me. Maybe I can help you make it a little bit easier because now you've got knowledge. You've got power on your side. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first commercial break. Toyota Jeff YouTube channel. That's me. I review cars. I show you what's great about them. Safety, technology. I show you what buttons, controls, and dials mean, how to use them, and how you can get the most joy and benefit out of your car after you've bought it. And most importantly, I'm gonna teach people across all car brands, doesn't matter if it's Ford, Hyundai, 
Honda, Acura, Toyota, doesn't matter. I'm gonna teach people how to buy new cars, how to make the process of researching a car, picking out a car, and especially buying a car smooth and easy and hopefully painless, maybe even a little bit of fun. I do all my videos to inform you, but also to entertain. I hope you're getting great value out of this. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell next to it so you can be informed when the next great video comes out. Hit subscribe now! All right, so let's talk about some common leasing terms. MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price. The sticker price. That's the manufacturer's suggested price that the car should sell for. However, the selling price, that's the value that you and your dealership have negotiated, have agreed on, and then you work your monthly payment off of the selling price. Residual value, that's the guaranteed value of your vehicle at the end of three years, and based on when you bring your car in, you'll have the either positive equity, you'll break even, or you'll have a little bit of negative equity. That depends on a number of different situations. Money factor, that's sort of the leasing equivalent to what interest rate am I paying? The term, are you doing a 24 month lease? 36 is the most common, you could be doing 39, maybe 48 month, hardly ever see a 60 month. And then down payment, that's how much money are you going to be giving the day that you buy that vehicle, the day that you lease that vehicle. Let's talk about how a lease cycle works. Let's say you leased a vehicle from me today. Year one, year two, year three. When you have about six payments left, you're two and a half years into it, you'll get a call from me, let's say, or hopefully any good salesperson and say, your lease is nearing maturity. You've got about six months left. We don't want you to feel rushed, so I give you your choices. Do you want to buy it? Do you want to trade it in? Or do you just want to give it back at the end of the term? If you buy it, that means you love your Honda, your Hyundai, your Acura, your Lexus, your Toyota, and you love it so much that you want to keep it. So what you do is you refinance it, hopefully around the same terms, and then you just have to extend your term. So in other words, three, you might go another two, three, four years out, and then you can buy it. You can trade it in. So you just take the vehicle to me, we appraise it versus how much the vehicle you still owe on it, and then you might either have positive equity, it's designed to break even at the end of the term, just so you know, you might have a little bit of negative, but you could work that into your next deal. So you can just trade it in, or you can decide, I'm done with it, I hated it, or maybe I liked it enough, but I don't want it again, I'm just gonna give it back. Now, mileage. When you go over on your miles, if you give it back to the manufacturer, they will look at those miles. For Toyota, it's 18 cents a mile that you're over, that's what you have to pay, but I don't know what the other manufacturers are, you gotta check with them. So, if you give it back, miles count, but, if you decide you buy it and want to keep it, you don't have to worry about miles. It doesn't matter. Toyota doesn't care. Ford doesn't care. Honda doesn't care because you're keeping it. They're not getting it. Or if you trade it in, now if you have a ton of miles, it will affect the value that your car is worth, just like when you trade it in on a normal finance. But if you trade it in, miles don't count. There's no mileage penalty. So the most common ones that I see are you're going to buy it and keep it or you're gonna trade it in. Most people don't just give it back and not get anything else. So the two main choices at the end, there's no mileage penalty. That's a huge benefit that a lot of people don't realize. Now let's look at this Camry SE, financing versus lease. Let's say somebody found the perfect magnetic gray Camry SE. Should you finance or should you lease? MSRP, 28,100, sell price, 24,6. Now, if you put zero down payment, 1,000 down, or 2,000. You don't have to put any money down if you don't want to. The interest rates are special interest rates, 0 0.9, 1.9, and 2.9, 48 months, 60 months, and 72. Payments are in the box. So let's say you did a 60 month term and you put no money down, you'd be at 458. Let's say you put 1,000, 440, 423, haha. -ha. Now, you could also stretch the terms out a little bit, which a lot of people do now six years, 72 months, then you get the benefit of a lower monthly payment. Now let's look at leasing though. If you put no money down, a 12,000 mile a year lease, that's gonna be $343 per month. Now see the benefit here? Would you rather pay no money down, 458 or 343? 397 or 343? And then the way this scenario works is about every $1,000 equates to about a $30 lower car payment. So if you put $2,000 down, you'd be at 283. That looks a whole heck of a lot better than being in the fours or the high threes. Now let's focus on this scenario here where you drive too many miles for 12,000 miles a year. 
you can buy extra miles and do 15,000 or maybe 18,000 and that raises it like I said around $15 so instead of no money down 343 you'd be at 358 or you can pad it to 18,000 you'd be at 373 it's still lower than this term at 72 and it's certainly a lot lower than 458 at 60 months same thing here with $1,000 down or $2,000 down so you might want to look at those scenarios if too much mileage is a concern for you this is test study number two the reason I picked it is because Tacoma has the highest resale value of any vehicle on the planet. It doesn't matter if it's a car, truck, or SUV. It leases out mind-blowing. The leasing rate, that's a term I haven't thrown at you yet. To determine how much you're actually leasing of the car after three years, you take the leasing rate, which is 78%. Take 100% minus the leasing rate, and you're only leasing 22% of the car, your payments are ridiculously low. So, MSRP, 38,473. You've negotiated the price down to 34,973. So if you finance, zero down, 1,000, 2,000. The interest rates I chose are 1.9, 2.9, and 3.49 for 48, 60, 72 months, your payments. Now you have to know that you're gonna get a higher monthly payment, just so you know, with 48 months. $661 with no money down at 60 months and then 569 is going to be at 72 months. So let's say you want to lease this one. Remember it has a ridiculously high leasing rate which means you're only leasing 22% of that vehicle over three years. With no money down you have a payment of 409. Compare that to financing. 1379 2348 Even if you bought extra miles of 15,000 or 18,000, you're still only adding either 15 to 20 dollars or 15 to 20 dollars on top of that. So you still have a very manageable payment for a vehicle that's almost 40,000 dollars. What do you think about this scenario? Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to Toyota Jeff YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Toyota Jeff, subscribe today. Also, ask for Jeff if you're in the North Carolina area looking for a new car. Jeff Teague, Fred Anderson, Toyota.